to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop this time like the last time. You better get ready to race to the I'm top. Ready to do this. Show you what the truth is. I step on the field. It's time to get real. I'm feeling so ruthless. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Lower the lights down. Hand over my crown. Hand over my heart. I do this for my town. I do this for my crowd. So turn me up real loud. My time. So what are you afraid of? Those feelings are made of. Get in the game, your moment of fame. Show them what you made of. It's time that we stand up. It's time that we man up. For anyone asking who is the best, we put in our hands up. My time, my time. Nothing can keep me from reaching the top. This time, like the last time. I'm moving so fast, I'm ready to I'm ride. I'm ready to throw down. It's time for the show down. I'm ready to rise. Don't be surprised, I'll take on the world now. My time. I'm 
This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Hello and welcome to the iRacing Esports Network and the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship Live presented by Apex Racing TV. We are here at Road Atlanta for the final race of the season. I am Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me uh, covering the action uh, today is going to be Daniel Leet with Scott Newton on the cameras. And Daniel, we've already sorted out the Endurance Cup. However, we've got the big one, the overall title to be to be decided over the next 45 minutes in this round nine of the championship yeah good evening sam and all the viewers tuning in great to have you on board and as you say yeah we finished the endurance cup last week at sebring now to the final one for the the championship season and uh what better place to come than road atlanta to finish absolutely one of the drivers absolute favorite circuits undoubtedly at sebring last time we saw a brilliant 90 minute race um, where, of course, uh, Pearson was uh, awarded the uh, title. He's uh, also leading the way in the overall championship as well. Over 100 points clear of Aidan Luthwaite. However, Neil Pearson's lead could be cut short. for the elite title as uh, Stephen Bartholomew leads the amateur title and uh, Michael Whiting leads the rookie title but it really could come down uh, right down to the wire as we saw last season of course when the championship was decided with half a lap to go at Silverstone hopefully we'll see similar action today we've got one more minute left in practice before the drivers will line up on the grid word on this Red Atlanta circuit however we've already said how exciting this, this place is real favorite amongst the drives it's got an incredible blend of being a fantastic driver's circuit in the first half of that and then there's also a lot of overtaking opportunities as well it's a very good host for the last round of the championship yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a circuit that's going to provide a lot of challenges for these drivers out here tonight. Obviously, the run up through turn one and, and getting up is pretty blind. So a lot of commitment from those guys. But you got to say, you get that really fantastic solid run down 
the hill, um, the long back straight with a really tight chicane there to finish off the lap, and then that awesome drop as you head back over the start finish line. So I think it's a circuit that really going to offer a lot up for these drivers tonight. Absolutely, and of course, as always in the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship, it's such a popular championship that we have two splits racing tonight. So in order to get to this top split, you've got to be quick. You've got to be able to uh, be in the top half of drivers, and then you can uh, yeah line up on the grid. Of course, drivers in the second split, I believe, do still score points, uh, but of course, not as many. All the championship contenders very much in this one. So practice is coming to an end. And the drivers will disappear out on circuit and soon reappear behind the Porsche safety car. If we can go through the grid for round nine of the championship. And it is Brandon Nash on pole position. Another fantastic qualifying for Nash. Feeben starts in second place. Then it's Neil Pearson, uh, Stuart Coulter in fourth. And then it's Nathan Huppert and Martin Crisp, Philip Wor uh, Worley, Aidan Luthwaite, Lee Vandenberg. Uh, BJ Kennedy, Pat Gallo, John Halloran, uh, Alex Quartz, Nick San Filippo, Jordan Cullis, Richard Hunter, Adrian Block, Matt Morris starting a little bit further down in 18. There's Jesse Butler, watch out for him from 19. Uh, Stephen Bartholomew rounds out the top 20. Uh, there's uh, Thomas Wilkes, Dave Clements, Dave Miller, Dominic Mellet, uh, Jeremy Clark, Brett Wilson, Scott Gamble, Reese Holters, Gretchen Hawkins, Ryan Colstead, um, and Damon Mulqueen and Matt Barr will probably not take the start. Certainly, I don't think uh, Colstead certainly won't be. Um, of course, there uh, are the stewards. So, 29 drivers out here. A little bit of a smaller grid, uh, potentially, but I think that's uh, probably going to make it a little bit of a cleaner race as the pace car already starts pulling away. We've got the full formation lap as well. It's not Red America, so it's, it's not quite the full the longest formation lap in all of our race. I think Watkins Glen might be second longest, but they're certainly up there. But yeah, a few fewer cars um, today, Daniel. But I think that, that should mean that there's a little bit less interruption for these guys at the front. It's just a 45 minute race, lapping other cars, despite the fact that this is a short circuit. Lapping other cars isn't going to be a big issue. So, uh, well, it should be a very intense battle. Yeah, the battles up and down the field will be intense. I mean, it's exactly what we've seen throughout the course of the season and it's going to continue on um, for the final race tonight but probably the big thing and, and you touched on there there will be a little bit of traffic that these guys do need to, to contend with obviously 45 minute races we do see one mandatory pit stop um, through these ones which the guys will need to come in for and, and serve so that'll throw the order up a little bit and be interesting to see when the guys decide they want to come in and take that stop to, to clear that but Otherwise, I think we're going to be in for some, some fantastic racing. We know a few uh, key contenders within the course of the championship at the moment and guys that have been very, very strong um, in race conditions, starting a little further down the likes of your Matt Morris, uh, Jesse Butler, who finished second last week out at uh, Sebring as well. So those guys got a lot of work to do to work their way back up towards the pointy end. Yeah, and last time we saw Pearson get an awful start at Sebring, spun within, a first, within the first few corners of the race. Do you expect him to be particularly careful? This is a real tricky place to start the race. How, what can we expect to see from him? Because, you know, he's in a great position on the grid. He's got everything to lose, not much to gain. Well, yeah, it's a hard one because obviously you want to try and get through as clear as possible and, and set yourselves up. So I think just erring on the side of caution as we see the guys working their way towards that final chicane now but um, erring on that side of caution is probably going to be what you're going to need to do to, to get the most especially in the opening couple of laps from there out once everything settles down you get into a little bit of a rhythm by all means hammer down and, and off we go and I think that's what we'll see from these guys tonight yeah I think so so after many weeks a couple of months of rating it's going to come down to this the final round of the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship. And it's going to be Brandon Nash to control the field. Timothy Feeben in second place. However, Nash pulls away from the rest of the field and we can get ready for 45 minutes of racing. Worley already gets him past Chris. That's up into sixth position. Also, Pearson having to go defensive against Coulter. He may have just been asked to go around the outside of him. Going into turn two, they go over the crest and now plummet down the hill. Nash with a comfortable lead, but Coulter has crucially got ahead of Pearson and Luthwaite has got past Chris. 
So that's a good opportunity for the driver starting in second place in the championship. Carlos has fallen way down the order from 15th on the grid. He's down to 28. Also, Richard Hunter, I think, may have even started from the pit lane as the judges get into single file. Poor start for Chris then, but Nash, very comfortable out in the lead. Yeah, good jump there from Nash, controlling the lead uh, as we come to sort of expect from that team. I did see Jordan Cullis getting a little bit of contact there over the top of the crest, turn two there and spun to the infield. So he's re been able to rejoin, which is great. And uh, as you say, we do have the car down in 29. I think that might be Brenton Hawkins uh, getting back underway. So he's a long way down at this point as the guy's now into 10A, 10B for the first time tonight. Nash losing a couple of tenths of a second just down that back straight. Such a long straight, that's going to be a real opportunity in the slipstream. Very few moves going into the chicane though, which is a surprising uh, on the uh, opening lap of the race. Is that Ford just going a little bit slow? Maybe trying to serve a slowdown a little bit further uh, behind. May have been uh, San Filippo, I think, just serving a slowdown. Yep. Oh, so easy to cut that chicane. And Oh, well, that's a painful slowdown for him because he's having to lose so much time on this opening lap of the race. That uh, probably drops about five seconds just due to that and a few positions mixed in there as well. Going to be tricky for him to uh, catch back up. But Crisp has got a really poor start. One second already behind Aidan Luthwaite. So struggling to keep up with the drivers who he starts it ahead of. And now uh, Pat Gallo is making a move on uh, John Halloran up uh, one of the places at least that he lost on the opening lap and has got Alex Quartz next. Yeah and Gallo uh, doing pretty well there just sitting down in the 12th slot right now so has dropped one spot I think that might have been Alex Quartz we saw going past there in that DPR car. Believe, uh, yeah it's Fieber now taking the lead then off Nash but Nash coming back going into the final corner I think you should see side by side for the lead here and Nash gets it back then. So that's what I was talking about before with the slipstream down the back straight. And it was the opportunity for Timothy Peep and it looked like he got it done. And then some real aggressive driving from Nash to take back the lead at the top seven, all nose to tail. Yeah, not much between all, any of our top seven at the moment. And uh, I mean, it's a group predominantly hounded now by the BMWs. We do have the sole Ferrari, the hands of Aiden Lithuay bringing up the rear, rear of this little group. So RSR Esports at the front, RSR Esports at the rear, and uh, top seven starting to extend a bit of a gap now over eighth position. Another instant for uh, Jordan Cullis. It seems further down the order is off the circuit goes Huppets. Oh, can Luthwaite get past? No, he can't quite. Although this could be a three-way battle. The Ferrari is notoriously good down the straight. Uh, he doesn't really have any momentum. Now dips back into the slipstream, trying to generate a bit of momentum. He's going to be close to the lead as well, going into uh, the uh, the chicane coming up. Luthwaite just cannot do anything to get past him. He's seeing Pearson pull away just a bit ahead. Now Worley and Huppert's going side by side. Has Worley managed to get past Huppert's finally? Seems as though he's got it done. And that is fifth position now for the 923 car. So by so for the lead as well. Kultzer has got the lead and Thieben's off the circuit. Drops down into fourth place. Fortunately for him, everyone else was battling from behind. But that was ever so close against Storm. I mean, you might need to get a replay of that because it's now Kultzer leading. Got past Nash. Pearson moves up into third place and Thieben drops from second to fourth. Yeah, I was keeping an eye on that as the guys ran into turn one. We'll cut back to the replay now. As you can see, a really good run there. Um, from the guys and we had the two Mark 1 cars trying to go either side of Braden Nash there and uh, that's what's ended up with Feeban being the man out in the weeds there running wide likely able to keep it off the wall because if you do lose traction through turn one very very easy with the speed and momentum you carry to hit that wall so he'll get back in line and, and go on from here but uh, Stuart Coulter starting to extend a little bit of a gap half a second now out in front Yeah, he almost looks, uh, well, he's more comfortable than what Nash was back when uh, he was leading a couple of laps ago. Now a bit of a gap for him between Worley and Luthwaite, so Luthwaite getting ahead of Huppets. And uh, Crisp is with them guys as well. Sideways, block moving past Dave Clements. He's had a great start as Clements. Up, uh, seven places, but wasn't totally convincing on that occasion. 
And he's spinning the car. Crisp is off the circuit at turn one, I think. And he's dropped back down into 10th place. Looked like he was getting some good momentum. And now spinning round is San Filippo. He's already got a slowdown in this race. Now he's made another And it looks mistake. like he also got collected as well by another car there. So uh, look at one of the Porsches. I think may have been one of the Mark 1 cars getting oh, involved in that. I think there's been an instant. Oh, it's, it's Pearson, the championship leader. And is this the championship in doubt? And I think also getting involved in that one was Luthwait. Incredible development. Yeah, Luthwait's involved Coulter from the lead. So someone must have lost it at the top of the hill. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a, a, a safety car right now. And it's well, now yeah, and Nash leading. And safety car has actually been deployed. So we'll get a chance to look back at that once the field re, uh, re falls in behind that. But that was a massive incident. It's really now shaking up that whole top five, uh, five vehicles. Absolutely incredible stuff. They do get two faster pairs. So if they can get it back to the pits, they can still finish the race and get some decent points. But just like last season, it's never comfortable, is it? You think that you know where the championship's going to go, and then it punches you in the face and goes another way. Martin Crisp, after having an off, just one lap ago, he's going to lead this race because many drivers are coming into the pits. Remember, a mandatory pit stop. They can get to the end of the race from this point. As all oh, the safety cars very slow, and Crisp does a good job at not smashing into the back of the Porsche safety car. It's all going on now. It's all happening. That could have been a little bit awkward uh, catching the safety car at the top of the hill. It is a blind run up there. So uh, good when I said be able to pull that one up. And now you see Matt Morris and Dominic Mel uh, well getting in behind there. But we must say a lot of drivers throughout the course of the field now have come down to take those stops, which is probably the smart move here. Obviously, with that safety car out, you don't lose the time that we traditionally see in a green stop. And uh, I think it's going to really come back to haunt these boys that have stayed out now. Yeah, you, you think, how on earth is this going to work for them? This is what happened to uh, Pearson, how you got involved in this. Yeah, a little bit hard to see from that angle as to what's going on, but I think potentially a car stopped on the outside might have been involved in it, but that's a um, little bit unfortunate for all those guys. We'll drop back to the onboard shot here as we ride with Neil Pearson just to see from his point of view and actually we'll move a bit forward up to Braden Nash. You can see the guys running down and then it seems to lose a little bit of a frame there, but that's uh, really unfortunate issues. Yeah, and even uh, getting a little bit of contact, of course, where a few of the drivers who were moving through. Some good avoidance as well. So San Filippo, an absolutely incredible uh, avoidance uh, in amongst all of that. So who was the leader at the time? Um, it was Coulter, wasn't it? So I think Coulter was the first one to drop it and then everyone else just crashing in behind. I, whenever I do a, a commentary, for, for with uh, Mikey Barbnier, he, he's, he's constantly saying, I think, due to the mistakes that he's made over the years, that someone will crash at the top of that hill. It is such a tricky corner uh, where you can so easily uh, go uh, over the hill and, and lose the rear end. Um, that's, uh, it's inevitable that's going to happen at some point. As Matt Morris comes into the pits, he was in second position, I believe, hadn't made a pit stop. Maybe thought, oh, I could try a bit of a risky strategy here, could work out. Yeah, maybe thought, nah, it's not going to happen. I'll, I'll, I'll pit now and uh, cut my losses. You'll be able to get back to the back of the chain. However, Morris, he would have probably been up in the top 10. If it's if he'd pitted with everyone else, he's going to be outside the top 20 now. Yeah, it's a little hard uh, trying to get the judgment of where you want to come in. But I would have thought the minute we saw safety car boards being displayed, uh, everyone would have been down the lane. So a little surprised we did see a few of those guys continue on. Safety car will be in this lap, we're being told as well. So um, we'll keep an eye here. Martin Chris will come under control of the fields. The guys then move to work their way around the back portion of this circuit. But as, um, as you are saying earlier, probably a few real critical spots around this circuit where it is very easy to overrun it, as you say, up in turn one. The exit where we see the guys now as they work their way out of the, the twisties, just catching that curb a little bit incorrectly, 
going to be very key to uh, not rotating that car off into the walls. And then that really big braking zone where we saw, I think it was um, uh, the Ford in the hands of Dave Clements with the rears locked up all the way on the entry into turn 10. And that was um, another big spot where you potentially to lose it as well. Of course, if you want to check out who's made pit stops, who hasn't made pit stops, do check out the SDK uh, Gaming a live timing link in the description and you can see when everyone pitted their last lap time their best lap time the intervals between each of the drives it's really useful uh, especially for a race like this where there's a few different strategies everyone pitting though on lap five they should get to the end of the race easy enough uh, because they uh, are not limited on fuel so you can comfortably do the distance well, of course a mandatory pits up for these guys uh, martin crisp and dominic mellet they did not come in they say the effective race leader will be Brandon Nash with Nathan Huppertz in second place. We'll try to figure out what's going to happen with the championship in a moment. But we've still got over half an hour of racing to go. Martin Crisp, massive gap to the pace car already. And he pulls away in his M8 BMW and he leads moving on to lap eight of this race. Straight away, Mellet's under big pressure from Nash. No, he's Nash. He has to get past straight away. However, Mellet's putting up a good fight. Around the outside he goes. It's not good enough though, and maybe uh, that's uh, yeah, just faster pace for uh, Brandon Nash pulling him ahead. Huppets will be next, but well, at least gets back onto the racing line. No other changes I'm seeing down the order. Uh, after this pace play, you can see a few gaps already forming amongst the drivers. I think after that big pileup, everyone's just happy to be alive in this race. Not too aggressive this racing as we speak. Yeah, really good jump from everyone getting away. Uh, I think we're going to find Martin and Chris going to be under a lot of pressure here now as the guys work their way down the back straight. Uh, first time after that safety car, Nathan Happert's picking up a wheel uh, on exit there as he searches after the back of Dominic Malt just in front. Uh, right behind Tim Feeban also on a little bit of recovery drive. We saw him going off early on, but uh, not too far down. Big news probably for Matt Morris that we saw going down. Uh, currently in 25th spot, so he's got a lot of work to do after that uh, little bit of an issue there with not getting in the lane. And he would have had a, a, a small chance at the championship if he had pits his straight away. Of course, third place in the championship is Matt Morris and certainly would have been able to maybe move up into second place in, in the championship with Luthwaite having the issues that he's got. And Nash and Crisp, I think Nash has just got past Martin Crisp. They are side by side and Nash now does move ahead so good driving so far from Nash because the uh, second place driver who have pitted is Nathan Huppert who's a bit further behind. David Miller's got a massive queue of cars behind him. Wilkes and Holleran and Clark as well and they're in a massive chain side by side down the hill. It's not usually recommended they do get into single file eventually. I think that was maybe Halloran moving past Clark I'm not quite sure. And this goes back to uh, Reese Holzer's and of course Jordan Callis, who's uh, quite quick up there. San uh, Nick San Filippo, um, also Scott Gamble and Matt Morris, obviously, as well. I'm seeing Aidan Luthway as not pitting. Do we think he towed, perhaps, or because well, he must have pitted? Well, actually, he did tow. He actually just received a penalty uh, from race control as a result of that. So the series for, for the regulars, there's a no. Uh, no escape policy in effect where you do need to request uh, exit from the track from race control. That didn't happen. Uh, so he will have a drive through. We're also seeing that Pat Gallo will have a drive through as well for contact under the safety car. So um, that's going to drop Gallo well down the order. Uh, he is currently uh, in a reasonable spot, but he will fall a long way down after that. Vandenberg just having a little bit of an off just dropped two places behind uh, Worley and Kennedy. That's uh, him down into eighth position now. To be right on board with uh, Halloran. Negotiating these, uh, this S's section. Obviously the drive in front of Halloran. Clark trying to go on a move on, uh, apologies, uh, Wilk trying to go on a move on Miller at the uh, end of those S's. Not usually a place where you see an overtake as uh, Halloran gets overtaken himself. He goes off the circuit. drops to 16th now uh, four places down from where he started here is Vandenberg then after that little bit of an, uh, of an off track Alex Quartz looks like he's going to get past him 
of side by side going into the chicane. Can get some, can get some great side by side action. Vandenberg almost into the wall. I feel like with the knee damage, with the knee time on the side, where the uh, grass is even more slippery than it is now, that could have well been in the wall. Neil Pearson making some good progress. He's back up into the top ten. It's the championship leader. Yeah, strong move there from Pearson. Uh, just getting a move done on Dave Clements. Next one in a, in line for him is Aiden uh, Volk in the, the Fordzilla uh, Ford GTE. Uh, and great to see a couple of Fords up still in and around that top ten at the moment. But Lee Vandenberg there with the two wide on the run through 10A and 10B uh, wasn't probably going to come off from him there. And, and unfortunately, that contact has dropped him well down. And currently sitting in 26 spots. So. Um, after letting all that field go through, he is a long way out of contention right now. Martin Crisp now got uh, Nathan Huppert sitting behind him. Plus Don McMellett, the uh, other driver who's uh, yet to pit. Scott Gamble as well. Saying that he hasn't pitted, but I feel like he maybe uh, towed along with uh, along with Luthwaite. Uh, Luthwaite, I mean, if, uh, you just think. If Ludwig had got through that pack, and uh, that is a big hit, but if he had, he would have been perhaps in a chance to uh, win this championship, would probably be in the top three places right now. Instead, outside of the top 20, and his championship charge in Tatters, and he might even get overtaken by Matt Morris for the elite uh, title and for second place in the overall standings. Really is a massive shame for him. Martin Crisp, uh, so always, Matt Morris has had a problem so maybe Morris won't be overtaking him because he's falling down the order at the moment, is Matt Morris, down into 24th position now. And he seems quite stationary off the circuit. There he is. That's an odd place to be off. And he doesn't seem to have hit a wall, though. Yeah, it's surprising to see the car uh, rotated there on the exit um, as the guys run across the start finish line. We're catching a replay of it where he was trying to work a move on Nick Sanofilippo. And uh, so actually Nick getting a bit of contact there and both cars sort of spinning off in avoidance. I didn't see whether Nick managed to get any contact on that forward, but uh, that's going to drop both those drivers a long way back now. Of course, elements of the new damage model on that, uh, on that car with the uh, bits disappearing. Uh, however, um, still the uh, new damage model probably won't be out for the GTE cars next build. Of course, you've got to do it for every single one of the cars in order for it to actually work. So, for the uh, next build for anyone who's uh, waiting for that, but of course, i racing uh, producing some good updates coming up in week 13 in uh, oh, what, three days' time, it's, uh, or two days' time even. It's, uh, it's very close. Uh, uh, Chris still somehow ahead of uh, Huppert, and then further down, Whirly. Uh, bats in with, uh, with Kennedy. So bats in the uh, top 10. And I've also got this one. Hunter behind Cullis and Gamble. Yeah, this is a good little scrap down further down the field, right in the mid-pack. Uh, the guys scrapping over 16th, 17th and 18th. Uh, three different teams all represented. So we've got XRC Racing Mark 1, as you can see, just in ahead. And then the DPR, who we're riding on board with Richard Hunter there. These guys uh, putting in some pretty consistent lap times. The pace... Very, very good for all of them at the moment. Um, around the 118 mark, which is, is pretty in line with what we're seeing, a little slower than, than the guys out at, uh, at the peak end with Braden Nash last time at 116. But um, it's really, really solid racing. And this has probably been the big attention point throughout the course of this season is this whole big mid-pack battle. We've seen obviously some great stuff up the front, but all these battles down the mid-pack and right up in front. We've also got Je Jesse Butler now being involved in that in the, uh, the Mark 1 Porsche as well. Yeah, such competitiveness uh, for the drivers in this uh, in this championship. Really tricky to tell who's going to uh, win out on each round. Do you think there needs to be some changes, a, a different philosophy when it comes to the the, the balance of performance next season? Because fixed setups in this championship, the BMW has absolutely dominated this season. I think that the organisers can perhaps learn. Um, well, look, I think the, there were some, some lessons taken away earlier oh, on. Puppets. As you see, oh, that was the car off the Anchor. side there. I think that might be actually Martin Crisp down there as well. And, um, 
Yeah, it was interesting. But yeah, no, we've seen a couple of good uh, good transitions done throughout the course of the year. There was a bit of a BOP adjustment with the BMW and um, some changes which saw a little bit of an improvement with the setup for the other cars, which has brought them back into line now as well. So that corner taking some more casualties, but this time it seems to be a bit more early on. So here is Hupperts. Oh, so he's lost it by himself or is this the oh wow no the car ahead sorry so that was um the uh, chris who lost it ahead of him and then hutpets had nowhere to go and another massive crash once again it's over the crest and can't see where you're going now means that uh whirly is up into or was up into fourth place he's just dropped down into fifth uh, just as we were looking at that replay uh, this is how it happened then to Chris. The same age tyres as everyone else. Oh, it just runs a bit too wide. Big bump. And uh, off to the moon. Did well to uh, keep it off the racing line. Yeah, it's always been a tricky corner uh, getting the most out of these cars. You see Butler running very, very slow, and that is Jordan Collis just ahead as well. But um, once you get a little bit too much of the car up over that kerb there, you run a very short bit of a road before you find the, uh, the the gravel trap and that's what seems to be setting most of these guys off and uh, unfortunate there that we saw uh, what was a fantastic run starting to form for Nathan Happitz uh, now be involved in that. Gamble having to uh, go left and right and left and right to find a way past. Jordan Cullis, but there is no way past at the moment. Jesse Butler, I mean, just behind. Seen overtaking, not easy around this place. I thought it would be a lot easier than it has been. These guys are evenly matched, but you would almost expect Jazz to potentially be slower than one another and still be able to get the move, such as the slipstream, but too much of a draft effect in these GTE cars. Girls are struggling to make these moves work at the moment. Huppets, by the way, still in the pit. Not sure if he's going to get back out onto the track. It could certainly caught her and San Filippo. Caught her, of course, leading the race early on. So there that we have uh, 25 minutes of racing and we've uh, had as many lead changes as we have. But here we are, round nine of the Aussie Mix and Fix GT Championship. Adrian Block, uh, I think he's just been overtaken actually by Dave Clements. Uh, no, he's still, he still, he was behind Clements at the start of the lap, to be fair. I think he was overtaken maybe on the lap before. And now it looks as though he's going to be overtaken by another driver. Wilkes, who had a look, not quite enough. Neil Pearson, by the way, up into sixth place. Seeing that he was involved in a huge crash earlier on, that's uh, it's not too bad going. No, it's really a um, solid effort for Pearson, who's obviously setting himself up for a good run and crack at the championship currently uh, as we came into this one up in first position in that championship and I mean obviously he is wanting to take home season 10 honours uh, tonight and, and sitting where he is at the moment uh, with the incidents we've seen from some of his, his closest challenges really um, I think he's going to find himself in a really good position to potentially take this one out. Would you, of course, you've commentated on this series probably a little bit longer than I have. I mean, I've, I've commentated on the odd race in previous seasons. Would you say Pearson's changed anything about his driving style, which has really allowed him to, to take the, 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 the championship, it seems, this season? Would you say he's improved in any department? Uh, look, I think actually the whole team uh, for DPR has had a, had a massive uplift um, in performance, especially over, over this season and, and sort of really stemming from, from season eight there. So we'll BJ Kennedy getting a little bit of contact uh, with Phil Worley. Um, but no, they've, they've come a long way and consistency has been a really strong point for them. Um, and that's ultimately what's getting them these great positions. If we look at the, the championship, or the current standings at the moment. Uh, Phil Worley, DPR, Neil Pearson, DPR, both third and fourth. Uh, right behind that, you've got Alex Court, another DPR car in sixth. So they're really starting to find their way and move up towards the front of the field. Yeah, been a great uh, step up by those guys this season. Uh, BJ K Kennedy just losing a couple of places. Uh, yeah, I think he just lost out to uh, Worley and uh, Pearson. It's Pearson out into fourth. Place. How much further could he get? 
Good to get a podium out of this. We also just saw a pit stop uh, for the uh, last remaining driver yet to uh, make a pit stop. It was uh, Dominic Mellitz, of course. He's now down in 22nd place, so it seems like that strategy didn't work. Uh, I'm a massive fan of thinking outside the box, doing something which is a little bit risky because sometimes it, it can yield you an, a, an incredible result. However, just the way that the strategy works in this series, it, it, it was an absolute decision. To, uh, you had to come in on the uh, pace car when it was out. That was pretty much the only choice. And now Mellet sits about 40 seconds off the lead and 30 seconds behind the drivers who he was battling earlier on. However, it could be a fun race. He's got a clean car. Can uh, maybe gain some places later on in the event. Uh, so it's Nash leading the weight, six seconds now ahead of Timothy Beeman. Great drive from Nash at the moment. Uh, he was impressive in qualifying, of course, but this is still incredible. His uh, race pace. And it's Worley in a third position, on course, for a, uh, a really nice result. Pearson, championship leader, champion elect, if you will, in, uh, in fourth. And uh, BJ Kennedy rounding out the top five. A couple of close battles out there. Of course, do check out the SDK Gaming uh, live timing, uh, where you can see the uh, gaps between each of the drivers. This is one of the closest battles out on circuit. Jesse Butler and uh, John Halloran and Scott Gamble. Uh, the uh, apologies. Um, and uh, you know, Hunter Butler and Halloran have been glued together for the entire time after the pace car, it seems. There's no splitting them at the moment. No, not much between all these drivers, and it's really good to see. Obviously, we've got a good mix uh, of variety in, in manufacturers in this with the Ferrari, the Porsche, and the BMW, which we know is very, very strong. But um, all these three drivers really, really close together. The lap times, uh, looking at what they've been putting down, not much between them at all. We're actually, Richard Hunter, a little bit quicker last time by, but not much between them at all. So I just saw in the bottom of frame a little bit of a move between Jordan Collis and Scotty Gamble as well, starting to shape up also. But these guys, Coming on really strong, Butler still you know, enjoying that second place he got last week. Yeah, maybe he wants to be a little further up, which he will get, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Further up, though, Jordan Collis and Scott Gamble uh, working their way up over the crest to turn two. And uh, these guys now in position 12 and 13th at the moment. Lap time still very, very good. Low 17s, although Jordan Collis there with a bit of a self-spin on the exit there. So that was uh, going to drop him a long way down the order now. Yeah, it's a massive shame for, for Carlos, who'd uh, moved up into uh, 12th place at good pace. And uh, unfortunately, that battle's kind of come to an end a little bit now, hasn't it? So with uh, Gamble now a bit by himself, side by side for P3. Pearson, apologies, this is for, uh, well, that, that was for P5, but also Pearson's just got past Worley. And Kennedy stays ahead of Clemens. So Pearson's just got past Worley then and uh, up into the podium places. Now potentially could catch up to Timothy Heben as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, meanwhile, Alex Court and uh, getting past BJ K Kennedy then. Up into the top five now. And Court's got a uh, good pace, was four tenths of a second faster than Worley on that last tour. Might be able to get P4 towards the end of this race. Of still got a decent amount of time to go. Set had so much action so far in this event and saw drivers trying to recover from the incidents that they had earlier on but of course the faster pairs that they could all take at their pit stop has uh, very much repaired that damage and you know, are really set on their sights. Here's a man that we haven't seen for a while, Aidan Luthwaite. Looks as though he could maybe change for the championship. Uh, involved in that big wreck and then towing back to the pits and getting a penalty for it. It's been a disastrous day for him. But his pace has been sublime as well. He's up into 17th place and got Grinton Hawkins, who I think will be quite a comfortable overtake for him. Yeah, Hawkins won't want to make it too easy for him. Though. He'll cover off as you see him going, uh, taking a pretty good line uh, as they work their way down onto the back straight for the, the next run. But not much between them. It's, it's probably a night to forget realistically for Aiden after those few incidences to touch on there. But uh, good to see him still out there having a good run and trying to get the car up as high as he can. Obviously, team points uh, still critical and, and overall finishing positions, as you can see, with a nice solid move there down into 10A. And that's very, very cleanly done. So it gets that position done, and that will see him now up into that 16th spot. Bretton Hawkins dropping down to 17th. Where's uh, Morris out on 
So Moss is 20th. So Lutherweight will still beat Moss in the championship, which uh, will be uh, will, will be good for him. That'll be the uh, the, the the elite title, that the top uh, championship. Four divisions in this uh, in this series, and they are in the uh, in the top division. However, all, all the pros, I mean, are very quick, and then uh, kind of these elite drivers are uh, almost a step above. They've got a fantastic reputation in the uh, in the series. Uh, by the way, um, lap five, car seven. Uh, six two. That's Neil Pearson with an unsafe rejoin. Thirty second post race penalty for Neil Pearson. Is this a spanner in the works, perhaps, for the driver who is comfortably going to take the title? Surely, thirty seconds right now with dropping behind Luthway and Morris. So he's got to play in some good times, otherwise he's going to drop many places. Yeah, and that's a big penalty for him because that uh, penalty actually is for an indiscretion on lap five. And obviously, we're now working lap 23. So, uh, unsafe re entry, that's going to really hurt him. So, he's going to need to push as hard as possible to gain as much position because right now, 30 seconds from where he currently sits, that'll see him fall almost outside the top 20. Butler's off, I think. He's just had a small off track. Apologies. Jesse Butler, it's not too bad for him. He's a little bit by himself, I believe. Uh, he's going to, yeah, he, he's, yeah, he's just a little bit by himself. Is uh, is Butler, so not uh, beating anyone too much. Uh, Jeremy Clark, I haven't spoke about Clark too much. He's up into 11th place. That will turn into a top 10 finish when the uh, penalty is given for Neil Pearson. How many places do we think Luthwaite has to beat Pearson by to, to make up that 100-point gap? Is it about 10 places? Yeah, you know, it's going to be a, a pretty tough one. I'd, I'd say at least 10, um, barring no further issues throughout the course of the race. Obviously, we're inside the 15 minutes mark to go, but it's going to be a tough one. Obviously, uh, with the way the points have unfolded throughout the course of the championship, he almost needs to get the win and, and hope all the worst, but obviously, we know what what's unfolded uh, for Lithuania tonight, which is um, getting hard, but he's going to need to drive the wheels off that Ferrari to get it as far up as possible. Ooh, Clark nearly making contact with the rear corner of Scott Gamble, and now Richard Hunter behind us is all over. However, he's uh, not got an opportunity to overtake right there. I think you're right, yeah, Lithuania would need uh, something else uh, in order to uh, to take uh, this uh, th this tight salt, because he's got to make sure they still beat Pearson. Pearson, of course, in fresher. Well, at the moment he is. At least he's uh, going to catch up to uh, Timothy Feeben at uh, at some point, and he will have to deal with him. Uh, but he, he can still play in some good times to worsen the the penalty of that 30 seconds. Just needs to play a bigger gap as he possibly can to everyone else. Uh, Jeremy Clark looks like he's going to lose out this time to uh, Richard Hunter. So that's a couple of places lost for Clark in uh, in quick succession. Hawkins under massive pressure now from Cullis. That's for 17th place. Cullis getting the cut back and the cut back again and you'll get another cut back. You always uh, just getting the cut back hoping that eventually you've got a good enough run to go for a move and, and there he is. He's passed and uh, well, very bad news for Brenton Hawkins there because Matt Morris also gets past. Yeah, pretty opportunistic move there for Morris just to follow through and, and not a bad idea to do so. But now Morris trying to get a move likewise done on the back of colour. So keep an eye on this one because this is going to be a really tight battle watching both these cars work their way down the hill. Morris a little scrappy though, getting that car over the curbs, Ferrari not soaking them up as well as what we're seeing from that BMW in front. But... Uh, not managing to lose too much time. The gap is just sitting at about three tenths of a second, but oh, Ooh. with a massive crash in the rear. Who is that? It's not going up as, a, as an option. Yeah, Reese Halters. Yeah, that's a big one for Reese. Able to get the car moving, but that was a huge incident in the back of the shot there while we were focusing on Matt Morris. I'm not sure when Marco Barbonera tuned in. Um, and by the way, I am so pleased not to hear his voice for once, saying that. Um, done a lot of commentaries with him recently uh, but of course Marco always says how 
it's inevitable that someone will crash at that corner at some point. I think we've now seen three crashes there and maybe a couple of others that we've missed as well. It is, uh, and, and, and that's pretty much all the big crashes we've seen. Oh, that's another one. Jesse Butler. And Aiden Litherweight as wow. well. So that's a huge crash for both those cars. Not sure what happened there. And that was Luthway, I think, trying to get past Butler. And that is two very strong drivers with another massive crash. This is how it happened. Cut back time again. Luthway gets his car to the inside. Now he's got part of his car alongside, but how much does he understand? Oh, he takes so much curve and it's inevitable that he's going to run out wide. And the RSR car flipping over. Does he tow back to the pits this time? as he learns his lesson. Yeah, it looks like we've also got safety car deployed as a result of this as well. So this will really tighten up the field again and uh, now uh, bring Tim Feeman back into the mix on the back of Braden Nash as well. But that's a really awkward, um, awkward crash for both those guys. We did see uh, Collis and Matt Morris working their way through that as well. So that's a couple of additional spots for both of those two drivers as well. And of course, Pearson, 30 second penalty everyone's going to be very close now so that's awful news for Neil Pearson so Luthwaite um, I mean the good news is that Luthwaite's out of this one now because he's got so much well he'll be able to get back out on track but he'll, he'll be miles down the order I'm just thinking where is Morris so Morris is 16 but Morris has got to pretty much win this race and needs Pearson to barely finish in order to win the championship. I mean, <laughs> considering that so much has gone wrong for Neil Pearson in this event, I mean, involved in a massive wreck and then got this big penalty and now the safety car, and it still looks like he's going to win the championship just because there hasn't been a proper challenge from anyone else. It's been such a troublesome race for all the championship contenders. But I mean, if Matt Morris can somehow finish, I don't know, maybe eighth place, it could be close in the championship. He's, he's got to have the drive of his life, though, when we get back going and uh, gain a few places. Yeah, he's going to need to really work very hard in that Ferrari to get the most out of it and, and climb those positions where needed. With safety car will be in this lap, so the field now back under control. With, uh, behind the, the, the RSR car there, Braden Nash is really slowing up the field. A safety car working and just about to drop into the pit lane so this will be really interesting to see when he decides to floor it but that gap which was climbing out to over seven seconds now absolutely evaporated to nothing so we're going to see a lot of interesting racing from all these guys over these next 10 minutes and this slow start is awful for pearson as well because everyone's now catching up in the train pearson if it finishes like this it's going to finish in 20 second place potentially even lower than that maybe gallo and holters might get past him but here is nash he is now going to put his foot down he's going to be concentrating on the race win nothing else timothy Feeben in second place pearson in third and just like the other race start very little side by side as we move across the line for that 28 in this race we're going to have uh, many more laps to go, of course. Uh, what, five more laps to go? Something like that uh, to, to uh, finish off this season. Has there been any progress being made by Matt Morris? He's on the tail of uh, Jordan Cullis at the moment. Hasn't yet got past Cullis, though. As they uh, will move up the hill for the uh, 28th time. Off track a little bit for Kennedy. But so he seems to have recovered all right. Morris right on the tail of Carlos right now, and I think he'll be able to move past. And that was uh, quite simple for the Ferrari driver, so he's up into 15th place now. Yeah, good solid move there. Had got a really nice run down the hill, which uh, ultimately set that up. John Halloran now just in front, but uh, getting a slightly poor exit. So the big twitch there from the Ferrari uh, under power out of the exit, which will hurt him a little bit. And potentially uh, we'll see Colour and get back through further up the field though. Uh, Phil Worley getting a move put on him Ooh, by Alex wise. Court, who likewise runs a little wide there as well. That's got to be a slowdown, surely, for Court. I mean, he barely took the corner. He was uh, all four wheels off the track. But, oh, maybe he's okay. Surprising. Of course, as the race goes on, uh, those 
slow down penalties become a little bit less bad because it basically compares you have to slow down a certain amount compared to your best lap so if you absolutely nailed that section on one lap then uh, iOS will be quite generous to you because uh, well you, you'll be able to lose a few tenths of that just because you, you haven't perfected it anyway uh, so you can see that at Daytona where your best time was probably uh, behind a, a, another car with the slipstream coming out of the bus stop chicane and you lose you barely have to lift off especially you've got a bit of damage if you uh, get a slow down uh, but uh, yeah, not too bad for him whatsoever there. So, uh, Feeben, who was being caught by Pearson, he's very much under pressure. However, got the slip stream just Feeben, and he's got good straight line speed because that gap was about half a second to now when we moved onto this straight. Right now, it's only two tenths. So, that is good straight line speed for the 988 car. And if he can get close going onto the back straight, he's going to be in with a great chance of taking the lead. Yeah, these guys, absolutely nothing separated in that draft, as you say, really, really helping out. Interesting to see the lines that both Feeben and Nick Pearson are taking as we ride off the gearbox view of um, Tim Feeben's car. And you just see that Neil taking a little bit more uh, nose in early on, and uh, Feeben seems to sort of square the corners off a little more, which is ultimately helping him with a slightly better lap time at the moment. Cullis has just dropped down to 23rd place. So he's had a, he's had a problem as uh, has Cullis. Shame to see that. So Feeben probably needs to be within four tenths, I think, going on to the back straight in order to be able to make a move. He's almost nailed that coin. It's 0.42. This is going to be close. It's, it's about a tenth of a second closer than he was on the last time. And he was almost in passing range. Of course, ABS on these uh, cars, I believe. So uh, tricky to make a move because they are so good on the brakes, all these uh, all these drivers. But here comes Beban. Is this the chance for the race leads? No. Let's go for it. It was about one and a half tenths of a second behind going onto the brakes there. And a little bit of a poor chicane. Loses a quarter of a second. And no opportunity into turn one. But at least he's sizing up his opponent. Pearson doesn't really want to get involved in this because remember he's got that 30 second uh, uh, 30 second penalty later on and that would at the moment drop him down into 24th place dropping him behind all the drivers who are still on the lead that. Yeah that's going to be a penalty that he's not going to be want, uh, happy about at the end of this one but right now you've got to try and open up as much as you get with we'll see some battles uh, still working most guys up and around the five to six tenths of a second uh, martin crisp now got himself pat gallo in the mark one esports car all over the back of him and then right behind that you've also got jesse butler another one of the mark one cars closing in as well so uh this could be a bit of a tricky one for crisp who we did see leading the race early on then had that big issue uh where he dropped the car off uh, a couple of corners back um very early on in the race and uh Kind of been a little bit out of sorts for the remainder of the night. Now sitting in 19th spot, still with about two to three more laps left in this one. He might get another spot though. Bretton Hawkins not that far up ahead of him either. BJ Kennedy sitting in the sixth spot. Right behind him is Dave Clements, another one of the Mark 1 cars, and then Aiden Volk, uh, two of our three Fords uh, in the race tonight, um, sitting well up inside the top 10, which is great to see in and amongst the BMWs. They're the best place of the other manufacturers so far, and a good run as the Porsche guys work their way down the hill. This will be probably the second to last lap as uh, our leaders are. Uh, Standing there, getting to see him there turning out a shot. So, not too bad. I think this is going to be pretty comfortable, though, position for Kennedy to hold at this point. Tim Feeben still working on Braden Nash here as the guys work their way. This will be this, the last time I think we'll see they'll just cross the line. Actually, it'll be the checker, it'll bring it out. So uh, Braden Nash will come home with a solid victory here. 
uh, right behind him, Tim Feeber, Neil Pearson, who still has that 30-second hold, oh, 30 second drop sitting right behind him. Alex Court, Wally, Dave Clements, a whole gaggle of cars now over the line. Matt Morris coming home in the 13th position as well. Yeah, uh, I see Lee Vandenberg getting home as well. Jordan Cullis now down in 21st, still fighting with Jesse Butler. And those guys working their way over the line to conclude their own. Seems as though then that Clark didn't quite make up enough places. I think Pearson will finish in 24th when uh, all is said and done. So I imagine that will be the points he needs to win the title. Uh, but what an incredible round this has been at, uh, at Road Atlanta. Absolutely craziness going on with all the crashes and the safety cars and the uh, the drama throughout. But it's Brandon Nash who uh, who managed to uh, take the uh, take the victory. And uh, Dan, could you go through the uh, final results then? Yeah, so we'll go through them now. Braden Nash uh, we saw getting the win tonight for RSR Esports. Tim Feeben home in second position. Neil Pearson getting home in third. Uh, Alex Court for DPR Racing, home in fourth tonight. Phil Wally in the fifth position. Dave Clements in sixth. BJ Kennedy seventh. Aiden Volk in eighth. Tim Walkins uh, up in the ninth. Dave Miller tenth. Uh, outside of the top ten, we had Richard Hunter, Jeremy Clark, Matt Morris getting up into 13th after his uh, incidents earlier on in the race. Scott Gamble, Lee Vandenberg uh, come home 14th and 15th for Mike One Esports. Uh, John Halloran in the 16th, Brett Wilson uh, 17th, and Brett Hawkins down in the 18th position tonight. A uh, little further down, we had Martin Crisp coming home in 19th, Jesse Butler uh, down in 20th, Jordan Cullis, who we saw having some good scraps throughout the course of the night, 21st. Reese Halter with the, uh, the big incident that we saw very late on in the race. Home in 22nd, Dominic Malta, 23rd, Pat Gallo, the last uh, runner on the lead lap, coming home in 24th. And then we had the Steve Bartholomew car in 25th, then our start of our retirements, Aiden Litherweight. We still have that massive incident. Later on, uh, Nathan Happert, Nick Sonofilippo, and Stuart Coulter. Yep, so that is the uh, finishing then of uh, round nine of the championship, the final rounds of the championship. However, we've still got some interviews uh, to get through. And, uh, well, I think we will hopefully get some interviews with like the, the championship winners as well later on. Um, but uh, first up, we'll have a chat with the uh, driver's winner for today, Brandon Nash. A brilliant drive uh, from him today. Uh, congratulations, Brandon. I mean... Take us from the start then. I mean, you got pole position, but it looks like a very competitive race. Initially, you lost the lead. I mean, how com how uh, confident were you in those early stages? Because there were six or seven other cars up there. He looks very quick. Yeah, no, that was uh, one of the um, scariest races of my life. Um, first lap, I was like, all right, yeah, I got this. And second lap, I realized I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the racing was phenomenal, keeping it clean um, right up until the crash, but accidents happen, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, awesome race. And I think when the crash happened, I think you were in second place and you got a small tap on the side. Yep. I mean, that must have been the uh, the lights before your eyes. Yeah, no, I thought race was over, but slammed the brakes on, straightened it up and had a fast repair. So got that sorted and yeah, just pretty much back out in first just had to get past the um cars that hadn't pit yet and of course then right at the end there's a safety car you, you built up a brilliant gap then it turns into nothing and timothy got so close he seemed to have good straight line speed on you were you did you have to defend at any point were you concerned that he was gonna get past you no, I didn't really have to defend. I was um, I was cautious of it, but yeah, I, that last corner coming onto the back straight, I just can't get it right. So he um, he was gaining on me down there, but just managed to build enough of a gap through the S's to keep him at bay. Well, it's a uh, a great result uh, for you today, um, Brandon. And how would you assess your championship? I'm just looking at the standings at the moment. It looks as though you're going to finish in perhaps fifth place in the championship maybe even four maybe even higher than that you might be in the top three i'm not quite sure uh with that uh brilliant result how, how would you say you've done this season uh not i'm not where i wanted to be i, I could have been fighting for first but a, a couple of um rough races um 
a couple of calls that um, I feel could have gone the other way, um, could have changed it all. But but yeah, no. Hopefully next season I can um, build consistency and finish a bit higher up. Absolutely. Well, we wish you the best of luck for that one, Grant. And before we let you go, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Ah, uh, yeah. Just like to thank um, um, AMF for putting on an awesome series. My first season here, and it was it was an awesome one. Um, and just like to thank you guys for the broadcast. You've done an awesome job. And just our team sponsors: um, Butt Kicker, uh, Formula, Formula, Formula Hypersoft News, Abruzzi, and G Performance. Awesome. Thanks for having a chat with us, Brandon, and uh, best of luck for next season. Thank you. So that was uh, Brandon Nash, who finished in uh, first position, of course, today. And like I said, might be in third place in the championship. It's ever so close. Hopefully we'll get some confirmation with the uh, points later on. Uh, Daniel, who are you going to have a chat with next? Yeah, up next we've got uh, Tim Feeman coming home in second tonight for the Mark 1 Esports team. Tim, congratulations, mate. Great, solid result. Uh, you found yourself in a lot of spicy battles throughout the course of this one. How was it out there for you? Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Um, yeah, it was a good result. Um, yeah, it was probably just lucky in the end. Uh, there was quite a few big accidents in front of me. So, yeah, it was just luck to sort of be there at the end. But, um, yeah, it was good. Nash was... Um, yeah, really quick the whole race. I didn't really have the pace for him at the end, but um, and yeah, I suppose it was handy uh, with Neil getting a penalty. He sort of, I think, just sat in in third. So yeah, it was good just to run to the end. Yeah, well, it looks like you found yourself in. I'd say yeah, sort of really good battle. I mean, the the middle stint where we after that first safety car, probably the gap extended uh, a fair way out, um, and you might have been struggling a little bit there. But come the second the, the second to last safety car that we got. You were right back in it with a chance where you're, you're thinking this is a good opportunity to get a move done and, and potentially take the win out at that point. Um, oh, look, if there was going to be a place to do it, it was obviously down the back straight into the chicane. Um, yeah, and obviously I had the benefit of having a toe, but probably just wasn't quite there. If I was another tenth sort of closer at the start of the straight, I think you could have had a crack. But um, yeah, I was just happy to, uh, I suppose, play conservative in the end and just take second. So yeah, happy with that. Fantastic, mate. And obviously, uh, you've been in, in the championship for the course of the season. How have you found it um, over the nine rounds that we've had so far? And are we likely to see you back again season 11? Yeah, definitely back for season 11. Um, unfortunately, uh, holidays got in the way of the first quite, uh, three or four rounds for me. So I missed out on the start of the season. So I only sort of came in late. So it would have been nice to sort of run the whole thing. But um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Obviously, um, I've had the last few races up the front, so that's been good. So, yeah, really looking forward to next season. Fantastic, Tim. Well, uh, we'll before we let you go and enjoy the celebrations tonight, is there anyone you'd like to thank uh, for helping yourself out in the team? Yeah, just like to thank, uh, obviously, the Mark 1 eSports team and our sponsors, uh, RMS Race Management, Bow Repairs Australia, uh, LeBronc, LeBronc Group, Knight Rider Designs, Inns and Technology, and Sam, Block, uh, Sam Blackout Media. So yeah, thanks guys, and you guys done a great job on the coming through this season. It's been really good, and thanks to Ryan and AMF for... Fantastic, mate. We'll go enjoy the uh, the couple of weeks off now, and, and we'll look forward to seeing you back out on track for season 11. Thanks, mate. Take care. See you guys. That was uh, Timothy Fieber, and of course, second place driver today. Um, after, of course, a penalty for Neil Pearson, uh, promoted up into a uh, third position is going to be uh, Alex Courts. Congratulations, Alex. Um, starts at 13th buddy. place, but uh, so a podium was uh, probably a, a distant dream at the start, but it's uh, turned into a, a, a reality. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely stoked with uh, another podium in my second season. So, yeah, couldn't ask for a better way to finish off the season. Absolutely. Um, take us through that big pileup at the start because that was a, a massive moment affected many of the drivers amongst the top seven. How, how was it avoiding that and how was it avoiding all the crashes out there today? Uh, I just sort of crossed my fingers and took a breath and just hoped that I got through it. So I was a bit lucky, I think. <laughs> 
yeah, well, it was a really good avoidance and uh, it was a very good uh, drive um, overall. And I mean, across the season, how, how would you say that? Um, w would this be your highlights of the season or, or would you say that uh, your previous podium was the highlights or, or what would you say was your best moment? Oh, absolutely. Getting to the podium, you know, it's... yeah, um, less words, basically. Um... The boys at DPR race, fantastic for me, um, helping me along the way, encouraging me, and yeah, yeah I've only been I race a couple of years, so pretty good feeling to get to the podium. Absolutely, it is a, a really good result for you, and uh, looking ahead to next season can we expect to see you back on the grid and do you have any aims for next season any goals uh definitely yeah i'll be back um yeah just more podium i'd like to get the podium absolutely well we wish you the best of luck for that one alex and uh before you say goodbye is there any shout outs you'd like to give anyone uh yeah thanks to apex racing for the broadcast uh amf um ryan and just putting in all the work, uh, then our, our sponsor, Southwell Voice, Ben Max Mechanical, Bet Smart Racing Service, and also just want to give a shout out to Hayden Cannon down here in Tassie. Awesome, well thanks for having a chat with us Alex, and uh, best of luck um, for the next round, and uh, hope to see you back soon on the IRS and Esports Network. No worries, thanks very much guys. That was a third place driver, Alex Port. Uh, Daniel, who are we going to have a, uh, a talk with next? Well, up next, we'll have uh, race organizer Ryan Colsat. Ryan, mate, uh, thank you for all the effort you've put in behind the scenes with race control. Uh, how's everything been out there from your point of view so far? Um, I think it was fantastic season for our short season where we normally the, you know the participation drops off a fair bit uh, I think we had a fantastic season um, I don't think anyone really knew who was going to win it and it was very open up until probably the last two or three races so um, yeah no it's been great this season yeah definitely and we, we saw uh, last time out as well um, some fantastic running to finish off the endurance season and I think uh, from your point of view at the moment too we've also got uh, a new little prize which we didn't know a lot about at the start of this one but uh, best and fairest award yeah, so um, Abruzzi came on board with us this season and um, have put up a Best and Fairest Award. Now, Best and Fairest Award is a pair of boots, a pair of gloves and a T-shirt for who the race stewards deem to be the Best and Fairest for the season. And um, we've deemed that to be Michael Whiting. He's in here with us now. Um, quick note too, Michael Whiting's actually taking out the Rookie Championship too, so it's been a stellar season for Michael. So, uh, yeah, congratulations, Michael. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's been a really good season so far. Um, yeah, absolutely stoked to one best and fairest and the, the rookie as well. Yeah, definitely. It was a uh, very strong run for you over the course of the season, Michael, as well. How have you found it out there uh, over the, the course of season 10 as well? Uh, it's been really tough, actually. There's some super fast drivers uh, in this category. Um, so even just to be mixing it with some of the front runners um, in a couple of the races, uh, I've been really, really chuffed with that actually. Um, I'm on the second season in, so um, to win the, the rookie championship this season is really, really good. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, for the guys that, that know you in the Oz community as well, you, you do a lot of live streaming with this one. Um, no doubt that was an, another big hit uh, over the course of this season as well for you. And then. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we do live streaming um, for quite a few series. Um, and uh, the AMF one seems to be a big hit with a lot of the guys viewing it as well. So uh, we'll continue doing that into next season. And we'll uh, try and get some, some more guys in the team involved in the AMF series as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we are great to have more of the team in there and Fishy Motorsport going on uh, bigger and better throughout the course of this season. Can't wait to see what the guys bring uh, for se next season. Yes, you And we might hand it back over to Sam. Uh, get him back up for the next bit. Too easy, buddy. 
Yes, and uh, we can now talk to our champion, it's Neil Pearson. Uh, congratulations, uh, Neil, for... Um, well, l let's talk about today's race first, because it wasn't... I'd rather the, not. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the easiest championship uh, winning race. It must have been a lot of fun, though, making all those places up. That must have been the highlight. Um, it was a bit stressful, um, you know, the server going up a bit late and my nerves were already on edge. So, um, yeah, and then I put in good qualifying, so I was happy. And then, yeah, that start, um, I was just going to cruise around and save my tyres. And then the incident happened and unfortunately I got a penalty for. But, um, yeah, and I just drove around and tried to make up as much as I could and get as high as I could and get the championship. Yeah, and uh, take, uh, we can stop talking about today because, I mean, who wants to talk about today? <laughs> Um, but uh, overall this season, I mean, how would you say that you've improved? I think Daniel was saying how just your whole team has improved as a whole, but is there anything specific that you can uh, kind of pinpoint as to why you've been able to kind of step up to the title this season? Uh, a decent computer and really good mo triple monitors. Um, it's really helped just having the view and it's, I just find it's easy to drive and I can actually do what I can do with the car versus what I had before. And can you identify a, a race of the season? Was there a race where you kind of thought, yeah, the championship, I, I reckon I've got a good chance there. What, when when did you kind of have that realization? Um, it was going into the endurance rounds. I was leading and um, it was, I knew like the last three rounds, like seven, eight, nine, we're all going to be tracks that are really good for me. And I didn't know about um, Barcelona, but it, I had a really good finish. Um, but yeah, I think the round for me was uh, Road America. It's just like my all-time favorite track. So to get that win and have that really awesome race with Braden Nash, that was really good. And in terms of next season, the, the BMW has served you well. Any chance that maybe you'll uh, switch your allegiances? I highly doubt it. I've been driving the uh, BMW pretty much for about a year, well, uh, probably about a year now. I think it came out last year. So I've been driving it since then. I just gel with the car and I really like it. And will you approach next season, you think, any any differently? Of course, the pressure's on you. You're the one being caught now rather than the uh, the, the, the the one who is trying to the chase. Uh, you, you are being chased now by everyone else. Is that a little bit of extra, extra pressure for season 11? Um... Hopefully it won't manifest in negative ways and can actually push me as a better driver. Um, you know, I think there's some things I can improve on, you know, not get track rejoin penalties for one. Um, and yeah, just drive better, cleaner and have some fun. Absolutely. Well, congratulations, uh, Neil, on, uh, on, on your uh, season and uh, anyone that you'd like to thank before you say goodbye? Uh, yeah, I would like to thank um, AMF for the really good series and Ryan does a really good job uh, stewarding it, even though I disagreed a little bit today, but, you know, he <laughs> told me what he, the thoughts of where he was coming from and I agree with him. Um, Apex for the really good broadcast. I'm going to go watch it and see how it was. And um, just my sponsors that keep us going. Uh, Southwell lifts, lifts and hoists, Ben Max Mechanical, VetSmart Racing Services, and also always my teammates. You know, they really got behind me and just really helped me clear my head and just keep everything clean and do what I needed to do for tonight. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Neil. And uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, next season and hopefully you'll be able to repeat your success. I'll be there, hopefully winning everything. Awesome. See you then. Yeah. So that was uh, Neil Pearson, uh, your champion for season 10 of the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship. Um, Daniel, we've already had a look at the, the schedule for next season. It looks brilliant again. Four endurance rounds, of course, as, uh, as we've seen in the past. I mean, I can't wait to get back going. I mean, it, it's not a long break, thankfully, in this championship, but um, it really has emerged as a, as a superb series. This, of course, I believe this is the first season where we've been on the 
iRacing Esports Network and uh, still the championship just continues to to improve and improve and I'm sure season 11 is going to be no different. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm really looking forward to it and I think uh, what better point will bring Ryan back into, into the discussion on this one. Obviously, um, we've had a, a little bit of a fortunate view of what's upcoming for the next championship and as you say, really good mix back to the same formats, the 45 minute and then a, a, an additional enduro now. Um, obviously, now that we're going the full season after what was the Christmas break um, earlier on. But uh, Ryan, you've put together a fantastic looking set of tracks. I don't know whether we can touch on them just yet with, with the viewers, but looking very, very uh, spectacular again. Yeah, look, the same as most seasons, we try to pick an official series to follow. Um, we choose between IMSA or the ILMS. Um, actually, IMSA has been the pick of the rounds for the last couple of seasons, and we're going to go with IMSA again next season. Um, it gives everybody a chance to race during the week in the lead up to Sunday in official races at the same track. Um, if they want to use our sets, they're more than welcome to. If they want to use their own, that's that. But yeah, we, we, we follow the IMSA the series for that. So season 11 we will follow back into the theme to set again and as you said we're going to go four endurance rounds this season um and eight standard rounds so it should be good fun uh, we've got two blocks of two so two back to back lots of endurance rounds so it should be good good season really looking forward to it uh we've tightened up the rules a bit too and there's quite a few rule changes coming out um rule books almost finalized uh, just really cracking down on guys getting off tracks uh, that's one of the biggest things we're doing is we're lessening the amount of off tracks that guys are allowed to have uh, going from two fast repairs to one and really putting the onus on the guys to drive safe and drive clean. Yeah, definitely. All um, really strong improvements coming over the next season. And uh, on recapping for a bit of season 10 at this point, mate, how have you found that? I think we've seen um, you know, a little bit shorter season, but all in all, racing been really, really good. Um, from a steward's perspective, how have you found it, um, keeping an eye on everything going? Um, the steward's perspective, look, we don't get everything right. Uh, we try our hardest to. We've gotten a couple of things wrong this season. Uh, the one thing we'll always do, and I always tell everybody, is we'll always put our hands up and say we got that one wrong. Um, we are human. Um, but the racing itself is very, very good. Uh, a couple of safety cars in the last couple of rounds, and I think the guys are getting a little bit feisty as well. Uh, it, definitely can tell that the competitors are closing the gaps to each other and the, the racing is a lot tighter um, and with that racing getting a lot tighter we are going to see more incidents just racing nature it's going to happen um, all we can do is keep the rules in check to make sure these guys keep in line as much as they possibly can and go from there but we, we keep evolving as a stewarding team and we always will yeah, definitely. And I think that's uh, a great consistency for a championship like that. Uh, a couple of returning sponsors also um, that we understand, Abruzzi and Symfinity, along with RMS Management, who've been fantastic supporters um, through Season 10 as well. Yep, yep. So Abruzzi are back on for Season 11. Uh, Symfinity are actually going to sponsor our race controllers this season as well. So they're going to be on board for the whole season. RMS who do all my servers for me. Um, without RMS, building my grid sometimes would be an absolute nightmare. So um, really thank Dave for RMS. Uh, what a shout out to Damon McQueen from DM Cinematography too. He does all of my shots each week. Uh, anyone that follows our Facebook page will notice that there's 50 to 60 shots every race of all the cars going around. Everybody gets a shot done. Everybody gets a bit of love there. So yeah, really thank you to um, Damo for all the, the hard work he puts in in the background too. Um, and I really like to thank all my guys in the shooting room too, uh, Justin, Matt and Kester. Those guys put in the yards too. They, they give up their chance to race, to sit down and steward these races for these guys. So yeah, I couldn't thank those guys more than what I normally do. Yeah, definitely. And uh, mate, again, uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed um, keeping an eye on season 10 and, and bringing the, the action uh, to the viewers out on the eSports network. Uh, we've got a week um, off now. Uh, well, actually, I think it's two weeks. We return on the 15th of March uh, for round one of season 11. So that'll be really, really good and, and really looking forward to seeing uh, the competitors and the racing that we, we see in that championship. Yeah, me too. Back to Sebring as well. We were only at Sebring a week ago, I think, and we're back there again. But Sebring's a great track. Breeds fantastic racing. So, yeah, really looking forward to uh, the start of next season.
Yeah, definitely, mate. Absolutely. I'm, I'm keeping a, a fair eye on the final round as well. I think that'll be an absolute call. Yeah. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say much about that one. Bell Isle could be a very interesting race. <laughs> Absolutely. But, well, mate, again, thank you very much for all your efforts and the team uh, that have put in throughout the course of Season 10. I know the drivers have thoroughly enjoyed it. From our point of view, it's been fantastic to get a bit of insight uh, as the penalties have come up. I think I've tracked seven uh, with with the inclusion of the safety cars tonight, which is um, fantastic. So it, uh, thank you very much for all the effort uh, that yourself and the team put in behind the scenes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just one thing too, I'd like to thank Apex for doing the broadcast for us each and every week. Uh, also for working with us and uh, you know allowing us to do things like safety control messages so the public can see what's actually happening as well. Um, I think that's a great innovation that you guys were willing to work with us and get doing. So yeah, thank you very much to everyone at Apex for doing what you guys do. We love it. Absolutely, mate. Well, again, uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll chat to you very, very soon, right? All right, so catch us. So that was uh, Ryan Colstad, of course, uh, league organiser and uh, doing a fantastic job, as, uh, as he always does uh, each season, along with uh, all the other uh, race organisers as well. Um, Daniel, I mean, you, you've covered almost every single round of this championship. I, I've, I've been very fortunate to cover the rounds that I have done. I mean, uh, a brilliant season. I'm going to put you on the spot here, so grace yourself. But any races that you think absolutely stand out uh, to you as, as perhaps a, as, as the best race of the season as a, as a real highlight? Uh, look, oh, it's, it's a hard one. I've... I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them um i don't think i could put a put a, a, a fan favorite and i think probably the best racing action was the battle we saw at the closing rounds of barcelona with van gisbergen um with the, the door-to-door rubbing that he had to finish off that night um sebring last week out was absolutely fantastic and some really solid racing all up and down throughout the field so i don't know i don't i think i can really pick a, a, a absolute standout i think they've all been um really really solid to watch um from race one of the season right through to the final race tonight. Absolutely. It's been a brilliant season. Of course, massive thanks to uh, Jonathan Simon as well for covering the majority of the rounds. Um, yeah, massive thanks for him. And of course, he will be back uh, for next season. We certainly hope so, at least. Um, Daniel and uh, and uh, Jonathan uh, bringing, bringing you the action for season 11, which will be getting back on the way, I believe, in just a couple of weeks' time following the official series of course so we'll have week 13 but you know one week break we, we can all put up with that fortunately so season 11 of the aussie mixed and fixed gt championship will be getting back underway very soon of course if you've liked this video if you like the season please leave a like on it and of course do subscribe to the iRacing esports network of course the championship uh, will be the same time as well uh, next season on the iRacing esports network once again uh, so certainly do recommend you uh, subscribing to that along with uh, clicking the notifications and then you can see all the other iRacing Esports uh, Network, uh, uh, iRacing Esports Network uh, broadcasts uh, coming up. There's so many different categories, you know, single seaters, GTs, supercars as well, which is, uh, uh, yeah, went on earlier this morning, I believe. So um, just, uh, yeah, certainly do check it out. And of course, if you wouldn't mind, please do check out Apex Racing TV, our local channel where we do many broadcasts just like this. Uh, we would appreciate that one a lot. And also check out our social media as well on Apex Racing TV on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. But thanks to Ryan Colstead and all the organizers for the Aussie Mixed and Fixed GT Championship. Thanks to Jonathan uh, Simon. Thanks to Daniel Lee. Thanks for Scott Neaton uh, for bringing uh, you this, uh, this championship. We've certainly enjoyed it. Hopefully you have as well. And we will say goodbye for season 10 and we'll see you back for season 11.